Hey guys, Bernard in Productions here, and welcome to this tutorial. Uh, in this tutorial, I will be discussing how to use case slash select or select case statements in Visual Basic.net. In this tutorial, I will be using Microsoft Visual Studio 2010, uh, and I'm going to be using the VB.net 2.0 framework. Uh, this video should be applicable to anyone who is using Visual Basic Express Edition 2008 or 2010 and using the .NET framework of 2.0 and above. I also have reverted to the default theme of Windows because some people were complaining that um, it was hard to follow the tutorials when using a custom theme. So hopefully you guys um, enjoy that. Alright, so on with the tutorial. Now what I'm going to be doing in this tutorial is actually discussing how to use a select case statement. Now a select case statement is actually uh, an extended if else if kind of scheme. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to um, have the user input something into this form and um, do something with it. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and add a, uh, a text box here and a button and uh, I'm just going to make the form very, very small. So what they're going to do is they're going to insert a number into the button. Uh, so, or a number into the text box. And after that, uh, we will display something to the user. So let's go ahead and dive straight into the button's code here by double-clicking on the button. So the first thing we need to do is actually convert the uh, text box's text into an integer. So that can be done by saying dim text as integer equal to now we're going to use the cint command to convert um, text into an integer and then textbox1.text. So we're getting the text inside of the text box and converting it into an integer. Now what we want to do is actually display information about this number. So what we would usually do is we would type if uh, text equals 1 then we would display a message box you typed 1. 1. And then we would say else if text equals 2, then we are going to display a message box, you type 2. So this is classically how you would um, display things if you typed 1, 2, 3, 4, and uh, various things like that. However, in order to make these uh, super long if-else-if statements easier, Visual Basic.net actually includes some um, implementation called the select case statement. So how you use this statement is the first thing you do is you decide what you want to actually compare. In this case, we want to con constantly compare our variable text. So we're going to say select text. So essentially what we're doing is we're selecting the case of um, whatever variable we're using. Now, um, I just typed in select text here, but um, as you'll see, the correct syntax is actually select case text. Uh, IntelliSense actually adds that in for you. And then this is a classic block, so it's going to add and select at the end of that. So um, what we're doing here is we're simply comparing all possible values of the variable text. So now what we want to do is we want to uh, tell Visual Basic what to do um, in these various actual uh, cases of what text is. So let's say we want to say if text is 1, then we're going to say uh, you typed 1. So we can do this by saying case 1. And then we're going to press enter to get um, uh, to actually enter our code of what to do here. So we're going to type in message box you typed 1. So essentially we're just saying um, hey here's text now in each of the following cases you're going to want to do something different. So we've got the variable text and if text actually equals 1 then we're going to display the message box you typed 1. However, if case e if text equals 2, then we're going to want to display a message box of you typed 2. So this is an entirely different case, um, so we use the case syntax here. Now there are several other things that you can actually do with the case syntax. So we can actually also declare a whole range of numbers. So we can say if case is, whoops, not direct cast, if case uh, from 3 to 10, um, then we can actually display the message box, you typed a number between 3 and 10. Um, so we can type in uh, two different numbers and actually create a, uh, a wide range. We can also use commas to separate different numbers. So we can say case 11, 12, 13, and 15. So if um, 
for text we have 11, 12, 13, or 15, we can display a message box. You typed in 11, 12, 13, or 15. So there are several different actual uh, cases that you can set up using the uh, select case syntax. Now another interesting uh, implementation of this is you can actually list or connect these um, ranges together using commas. So we can actually select case 16 and then we want to do 17 to 20 and then 21 to 25. Uh, I know you for this you could easily do case 16 to 25, but this is just for examples case. So this will be either 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, and 25. So we're just going to say message box, you typed in a number between 16 and 25. Um, now these case statements don't have to be limited to one line. In fact, you can actually um, add in whatever code you want after this case. So if we wanted to, we can actually add in another if statement here. So we could say if uh, text equals 17, then um, we're also going to message box you typed in 17. So there are several things that you can actually do with this. So we can also talk about the uh, last implementation of case. Um, so um, say you want to compare it to a different variable. So we want to compare dim drinking age as integer equal to 21. So in the United States, the drinking age is actually 21. And if a user types in something above 21, we want to state you can drink. Um, or actually, for example purposes, so it doesn't coincide with any of our other case statements, we're just going to make the drinking age 42. So if the user types in a number that's above the drinking age, which in this case is 42, they will get a message box displaying that they can drink. So we can actually say case is greater than for, or drinking age. So what this specifies is um, usually you can just say case is, uh, or case 16, 17, 18, 19, whatever. But we can actually use the is statement here to add in a comparator uh, in order to specify a different variable or even a different number here. So we're actually going to set this equal to greater or equal to because uh, if you're obviously the drinking age of the drinking age you're able to drink. So now we're just going to display this message box you are able to drink. So here we have all different implementations of the actual case statement. However, say the user types in something that uh, we don't have a specific case for. Well, that uh, we need to specify with the case else syntax. So if the user types in anything that is not specified, we're just going to display a message box. That number does not have an implementation. So now we can go ahead and actually test out this behavior by debugging our application. And I'm going to move the form so we can actually see to see if our code works. So we're going to start out by typing 1 and hit the button. And the message box does in fact appear that, say, that says you typed 1. So that was our first case. So our second case is if you type 2. Um, so we're just going to type 2 and it says you type 2. So our third case that we set up is actually any number from 3 to 10. So we're, we're going to test that out by typing in 7, which is in between 3 and 10. And press button 1 here and it says you typed a number between 3 and 10. Um, also case 11, 12, 13, and 15, I'm just going to choose 13 there, press button, and you typed in 11, 12, 13, or 15. Um, our very complicated case statement, 16, 17 to 20, or 21 to 25, I'm just going to type in 17, or actually 18 here. And um, so now we've get, we get the uh, message box, you typed in a number between 16 and 25. However, if we type in 17, we also have an if statement connected to that. So if we press button 1 here, we get the message box, you typed in a number between 16 and 25, but then afterward, we get the message box displaying that we typed in 17. And finally, the last thing to test, or the second last thing to test, is our drinking age. So if we typed in 41 and press button 1, uh, you can see that this number does not have an implementation, uh, because that is actually following the case else uh, syntax there. So we do not have anything specifying 41. However, if we type 42, we can see that you are able to drink uh, because we are equal to or above the value of drinking age, which is indeed 42. 
Now, the case, select case statement does not only work with um, with integers. It also works with booleans, bytes, chars, or characters, dates, doubles, decimals, integers, longs, any sort of object, a short, a single, and a string. So um, we can actually go ahead and test this out by uh, actually testing out strings here. So we can dim text as string equal to text box one dot text, and now we can go ahead and delete this whole select uh, case syntax here. So let's just say the user is in entering a program where they enter a um, a color. So we can do a select case of text, and um, so in various cases we want to do various things. So if the user has the case of typing in red, then we are going to want to display a message box. Um, that color is red. <laughs> Very creative, I know. Um, so if they type in red, we get to uh, actually specify to the user that the color is red. If they type in orange, however, so if the case is orange, then we can actually type the message box. Whoa, I am messing up all over here. Message box, um, that color is also a fruit. Hmm. Um, now, one interesting implementation of this is we can actually type in case, let's just say, yellow to zeal. I don't even know if zeal is a real color, but let's just say it's more of a blue-purplish color. Um, so what this will actually do is it will actually get anything in lexicographic order between yellow and zeal, or at least that's what I believe. So um, if we typed in let's just say what comes in the dictionary which is lexicographic order what comes in between zeal and yellow um, we can type in yolk like egg yolk and this case will also apply so we can say message box this color is near the end of the alphabet so f please forgive me if zeal is not a color um, I was running out of ideas and um, we can also test out several colors like case green um, Let's see, blue or purple. So if indeed we type green, blue, or purple, we can say those colors seem sort of royal because those are usually associated with royalty. However, we could use the case else syntax to specify what to do if no color is uh, actually implemented. Uh, no definition, we're going to say. So we can go ahead and actually test out this implementation of uh, using a select case on strings by debugging our program. So we're just going to first type in, let's just say, brown as our color. And if we type in, or if we press button one here, we get the message box no definition. So let's go ahead and test our existing colors. Uh, red, we get that color is red. We can type in orange, we get that color is also a fruit. Clever. Um, we can type in yellow as a color. And it says this color is near the end of the alphabet because this does, in fact, follow the lexicographic order. Or in the dictionary, it is, in fact, in between uh, yellow and zeal because it is yellow, one of the endpoints. However, if we type in yolk here, like egg yolk, we also get the message this color is near the end of the alphabet. Because in dictionary order, in a dictionary, the word yolk would be in between the words yellow and zeal. Now, this is a specific implementation of the string class uh, because this to comparator here is actually using the um, the compare to method of the object. So if you wanted to make cases of custom objects, you would have to actually implement iComparable and override the compare to method. However, in order to do that, um, or actually doing that, will be stored in a separate tutorial. So we're just going to type in zeal as well and um, we get that color is near the end of the alphabet. Um, so now we're going to try one of our royal colors, blue. And this color seem... Oh, I missed the nest there. Th those colors seem sort of royal. Okay. So, um, case... select case things, um, or select case blocks, if you will, actually make sorting through the multiple values of a certain variable extremely easy. Uh, and this will actually be um, very useful if you are trying to sort through a bunch of data that the user could have selected in, let's just say, a combo box in your program. 
So thanks for watching this tutorial. Uh, I hope you learned a lot from it. These select case blocks can be very useful. And um, you, you might as well use them in almost every program you have. Uh, because they're useful almost everywhere. So once again, thanks for watching this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. I will be on a week-long trip to visit colleges um, this upcoming week. So I won't be making any new videos. However, um, I will still have my phone. So I'll check out any comments you guys submit and hopefully reply to them. Uh, please remember to rate, comment, and subscribe, and I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.